Hi everybody, Jennifer Ferguson here again, and I think I'm at my final stage on this um, coffee table. Um, I finally decided it is going to get a layer of glaze, and then I'm going to be done with this, uh, rather than a few more coats, a final coat after I glaze it. So, uh, But at least I know I'm getting to that stage. So I figured I might as well have you guys join me since I'm here alone and looking for some company. And I am going to glaze it with some of my leftover American paint uh, glaze. I mix the brown and the black together. Um, I'm going to say it's probably a 60 or maybe 70, 30 black brown. Okay. So I wanted to warm the um, black up. And hi, everybody. So excited to have you guys join me. Um, so I've mixed up my custom color. Okay. I'm ready to go. And um, I did test it on the other end just to make sure that I was in love with it and that I needed to do this. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to talk about glazing. So um, the glaze that I'm using is actually a pre-tinted glaze. Normally I like a clear glaze and add my own colorants to it. But like I said, I'm just using up some product that I'm trying to get rid of. Um, I'm not going to glaze over my um, crocodile finish. I absolutely love that. So I've been working around that the whole time. Uh, so I'm using chip brush, good old cheap brush here, and just going to pull some of this glaze. And I'm just trying to make sure that I got this where you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to brush it on. I don't care if it gets on the crocodile, I can wipe that back. But I'm going to get it into all the little nooks and crannies. And I'm going to do this whole side at one time. And let's see, get it to about there. And I'm trying not to put it on too thick because basically I'm going to come back with my um, favorite tool here and I'm going to um, probably remove all of it. I'm excited. My cousin Bruce is on here. Hi, Bruce. Hope everything is going well. Um, so once I have the glaze on there, now I'm coming back and I'm basically just wiping it all off. And, you know, you can shear down as far as you want it to go. So I'm kind of rubbing back and forth and just buffing it. And I want this end over here um, to basically fade out all the way. Because I'm going to go around the direction towards me over here. So I don't want to get left with any kind of a line um, on the other side. So I'm just kind of wiping it back as much as I want. And I'm going to see if I can get you guys a little up close and personal here. And that you can maybe see really how much that has changed. Um, the finish, okay? And I'm going to put you back up so I don't ruin my camera stand there. Okay, now I'm just wiping off the excess glaze that, glaze that did get on to the crocodile. And then I'm just going to continue around here. Um, glazing is really an easy process. Um, and what glaze does is keep my color, okay, I don't want to say paint because there's no paint in here, it's just colorant. It's keeping my color wet long enough that I can apply it, um, manipulate it, remove it, do whatever I need to do. Hi, Susan, nice to see you also. Um, gosh, all my Fresno friends are popping in here. I guess I gotta get back up to Fresno someday here, go see everybody, but I'm hoping you guys all come down and visit me because Huntington Beach is way cooler than Fresno, sorry to say. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going around here. Um, and when I'm doing pieces of furniture, I normally will just do a section at a time. Um, that way I can kind of control what I've got going on here and don't get uh, the glaze on absolutely everything at once. Um, so I'm going to take it down to the corner again. And I'm glazing this whole edge. And I'm just kind of pulling off the excess. And then I kind of go back to the dirtier section of my cloth to start with. And I'm going to just kind of blend in and fade in my corner there. And then just keep coming back and kind of just wiping off to begin with the first layer of glaze. And once I wipe off the, the first layer, okay, I missed getting it in the spot. I want to get it into that little crack there. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go to the cleaner sections. I hope you guys can see me still. And um, kind of buff out. Okay, now I'm going to come back and start buffing back and forth and making sure that I have this section 
back down to about the same level as I did the end, okay? And that's one of the things with glazing when you're doing section at a time is trying to get all the sections to look the same. And the other thing is when I'm getting to the final area here where I'm doing my final buffing, I always like to have a clean piece of cheesecloth. Um, that way you're not putting back on the glaze because um, if you keep using the dirty sections, it, not only is it removing it and buffing it, but it also can start putting it back on again. Uh, so, like I said, with my last uh, buffing here, I'm just going to normally find a clean section and then just go back and forth. Okay, I'm going to see if I can bring you guys around so you can stay with me on this project. And look at that. I really do like that warmer color on the top, but I think this is going to really come out and look nice in my house. I am excited to finally actually take this home, okay? Um, I'm not sure how long this project has been going on at this point. Um, and I think I had posted it to Kitty on here earlier when I was showing you guys a little while ago how to use the, um, the final coat that... I would have stuck with the teal if I was living alone, but because I live with my boyfriend and we've got three sons together um, and I normally have more boys in the house than girls, I was trying to come up with something a little bit more conservative for everybody's taste because otherwise I would have left it teal and my house would just be all kinds of interesting colors and I don't care because, you know, being artistic, we don't mind if everything doesn't match and I'm kind of that eclectic type of personality so I like things that are kind of mis mismatched and eclectic looking so I would have been okay and it's not that my boyfriend doesn't love my work he loved the coffee table we just decided that the teal was probably a little bit more than he would probably prefer and I had to agree it didn't match anything in the house okay but like I said, I would have been okay with that. <laughs> ah, this is so awesome. I am seeing some people on here that I haven't seen in a long time. So hi, Nancy. Okay. I'm going to just continue around the top because I have to finish this out. Okay, let's keep you moving with me. Let's get you going this way here. Um, because i got to finish this section out before I go to the side. Because otherwise I'm going to have two ends that might not blend in together. Um, one of the other reasons why I really also wanted to glaze it is there's these little recessed areas here on the top you can probably see on that side better and I really want it glazed to get down into those crevices because you it's not perfect okay so that's even a way to kind of hide how the paint never got down into that crevice really good um, and it was even showing some of the teal still which didn't bother me but um, sometimes glaze is a great way to hide imperfections so I have to say not always are we just glazing because we want to glaze sometimes we're glazing because um, we can disguise uh, some of our imperfections as we go okay kind of stretching and pulling all that glaze because as you can see um, as dark as I'm putting it on as much as I'm putting it on all I'm doing is turning around and pulling more than 90% of it back off uh, so let me get this section done here and I'm going to use a clean piece as I actually get my corners going because I want those to blend together really well um, and so sometimes it's easier just to start with a clean section of your cheesecloth okay I'm not sure if you guys can see me let me see if I can keep moving this at a different angle here so you stay with me I think it could be frustrating be watching a video and you can't see what the person's doing okay so now that I got the ends blended in now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my first layer of glaze and clean up the area that's over the crocodile oops I dripped blend that in and I guess I shouldn't be using the middle of the coffee table as my palette area. Oh no, I love how this looks now because all the glaze is starting to bring out all the texture and the paint, um, giving it so much more personality. I like things that have interest and depth to them. 
So to me, this is looking way cooler. So if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, go ahead and post your questions. And I might not answer while we're here on live, but I can definitely go back later and um, answer your questions for you. And then I'm gonna watch, have you guys come over here. Okay, let's make sure I'm starting to not move as quickly here with these rollers. And I'm gonna do the one section under here, which I think might be fun to kind of actually watch me do this. Got my bucket all ready to go. Um, and the other thing, um, just so I was telling you guys, I'm, I'm using cheesecloth, okay? And this is a faux finishing cheesecloth that comes off in little pieces like this. And normally I'll take a couple of these off together and um, fold them to where I got a nice little pad to work with. And this is really nice to help remove your glaze. Uh, the cheesecloth comes on bolts, okay? So this is a brand new bolt. Love this stuff. Can never have too much cheesecloth, okay? And let's see if you can, you know what? Give me a second here. Let's lower this. Oh, gosh, we just love this tripod. There we go. Okay, now, is that better? Can you guys see me? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> okay. I know I'm really down here, okay? Okay, so now we're going to just start here on this section. Okay, I want to make sure I got you guys in here. And getting all the glaze in. And I want to do the whole area at once, so I'm going to get this under section too. And then, ooh, got a lot of glaze over there, so let's pull and stretch that out. And then I'm going to go about halfway here and finesse all this. And I'm using the brush. Let's see if you can see. Okay, I can't move in too far here. I'm having to kind of work the brush back and forth because I want it, the glaze to get into all that detail um, where the design is carved in here. So I'm kind of even stippling that, pouncing it back and forth, uh, trying to get all that in there. Um, because there's no other, the cheesecloth is going to remove it. It's not going to help apply it. So you want to work it into all the areas. Um, okay, so I'm going to start off. Hi, Kelly. Nice to see you, too. Okay, so now I'm just going to come here with my cheesecloth. And again, wipe off that first layer. And because I have to blend into this section that I'm leaving undone, I'm not going all the way, I'm just feathering that out to soften it. And again, I'm just kind of using the dirty cheesecloth here to remove my first layer. And you basically can take off as much as you want. Um, that's kind of a personal thing of how much of the color you remove. And now, I'm gonna just kind of stipple that because there's a lot of it stuck in that corner there. And I mean, you can decide, do you want it left in the corner? Do you want to leave it heavier? I mean, there's really no wrong way to glaze, in my opinion. I kind of think it's just a, a personal preference of how much you like to see left behind into the nooks and crannies and um, how much color you want. Um, so that's just kind of one of those personal things, just depending on how distressed. And here we go, let's keep moving down. So I want to finish out this section completely. And I love how the detail work really has popped out because now the glaze is set all into that. And now I'm just going to finish out my last little section here and glaze this up. And like I said, I normally will just work one section at a time. Um, I think it just helps me to stay in control of what I'm doing and that way my project doesn't get ahead of me or away from me. Um, and it just depends on how much open time you have in your glaze. Um, like I said, I'm just kind of using up some older stuff and I don't believe the open time is real great with that product. So I'd rather be a little bit more on the conservative side 
of how much of an area that I'm attacking at one time, because that'll definitely give me more control. And then I'm just kind of blending this back into where I had stopped and I'll come in with a little bit cleaner piece of cheesecloth and just do my final kind of finesse. Um, and when I'm wiping back and forth, um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm just basically doing a real soft buffing motion. So um, you can see not too much more is coming off. <laughs> I, I am really impressed. Even my son must be so bored he's joining us. That's great. Okay, guys, I promise I'll finish this up and be home to, sometime soon. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick view of what I was finishing up here. And uh, I'm glad that you guys took a moment to stay with me here and watch the process. Um, I guess it'll be next year probably before I see you guys. So I wish you all a very, very happy new year. And I hope you guys have a fun and safe weekend. Um, gotta also say happy birthday to my daughter. She's going to be 25 tomorrow. So happy birthday, Ashley. Um, once again, thank you guys for joining me and have a blessed day. Thanks.